Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Just stepped out the shower, blow dried my hair. So, hey, covering a multitude of sin. Uh, we are dealing with perseverance. Listen, lean into the storm. Lean. You got to press in. You got to push. You got to persevere. But whatever you do, do not let that storm blow you where it decides it wants you to go. No, you lean in that storm and go where you know you're supposed to be. Now, picture yourself in a blizzard, a snow blizzard. The snow is hitting your face so hard they feel like little needles pricking your skin. That's a weird feeling when snow hits you like that. <clears throat> the wind is whipping. I mean whipping. No need in having an umbrella because the umbrella is going to be blown backwards. That's how strong the wind is. And you're walking against the wind and you're leaning and leaning. Wind's blowing this way and you're fighting to press in. You got to lean into the wind in order to be able to go where you're going or else it's going to knock you up against the wall. All right. That determination to get where you're going is the same determination you've got to have when you contend for the faith. When you contend, you have to battle your own doubts, battle your own fears, battle you. <clears throat> Fight yourself, knock yourself upside the head, but battle you in order to believe Fight for the faith. Contend for the faith. You're picturing it or are you seeing it? Pouring down rain, the wind, is, the wind is whipping. You need an umbrella. You better have a raincoat because that umbrella is going to flop backwards. The wind is so strong. Might even blow out of your hand. But you've got to lean in to the wind in order to get where you're going, don't you? So you have to think about it like this. Are you determined to get where you're going? Or are you going to let the storm push you around and bully you around? How are you going to deal with that storm? There's a song called Warrior for the Lord. And I'm going to recite it, but first, Philippians chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Woo! Mm, mm, mm. Listen, when you are pressing, you are persistent. You are determined. You got that pit bull attitude. Ah! All right. Now, you know what it takes. You know how God refers to us as neither having spot nor wrinkle in our spirits? How do you get rid of a spot or a wrinkle? With a spot, you got to put stuff on it. You got to scrub. You got to soak it with bleach, all that. But when it's time to rinse and dry that bad boy and, it's, and you're ready to iron out the wrinkles, some materials, <clears throat> like some of us, are so stubborn that you got to add more heat and steam to that bad boy. Yeah, you may even have to mist it with a little starch, but you got to put that iron on and fight those wrinkles and work those wrinkles out, don't you? That's what you have to do with your attitudes. That's what you have to do with your flesh. That's what you have to do with your temptations and your, your emotional scars. You have to iron those babies out. 
because wrinkled material makes pretty material look rough, doesn't it? What does God say? He says, I will make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. King James calls it plain. It means smooth. Smoothing out all your rough edges, smoothing out your wrinkles. But are you determined to do what it takes to get yourself lined up so you can straighten up and fly right? <clears throat> Listen, when you're pressing in against that storm, you have to know where you're going. You don't flop around in a storm letting it whip you hither and thither and you don't even know where you're going on top of it. No, you have to have direction in your mind. You have to have purpose. You know you're out there in that storm. You don't want to be in it, but it is what it is. You got to get where you got to go and you know where you're headed. You have to know what God has for you. You have to know that God is working on your behalf even in the storm, that God will get you there through the trial, through the rain, through the wind, through the crisis, through the struggle, through the fears. God will get you there. But you've got to lean in, baby. But now the song, I'm going to recite it. <clears throat> Teach me to point my face to the storm and stand my ground. When troubles rise up all around, I'll have no fear. Fear has driven many gallant warriors to their knees. Broken hearts and wounded souls have caused them to retreat. Not me, no, no, dear Lord, not me. I take the sword of the spirit in my hand holding firmly to its truth, knowing all the power within as I march on to the fight. I see the children as they're killed, as Satan slays them with his lies, and compassion rages deep within my soul. And I know, once more, I've got to be a warrior for the Lord. Now, <clears throat> There's a scripture where Jesus says, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom. What are you looking back at? What are you staring at? What are you focusing on back there? That's spilt milk. That's water under the bridge. That's over and done. That's dead and buried. But for some reason, you won't let that memory <clears throat> you won't let that memory go. Why? Why do you feel compelled to cling to something from the past when you could ask God to disengage you from it? You can ask God to heal you, release you from it, get it out of your spirit. Hmm. But for some reason, what happened back then controls what's going on right now and can limit what's going to happen, can hinder where you're headed. So you have to be so determined to cut the umbilical cord to your past because you ain't letting that one monkey stop your show. You have got to press in and press on. <sighs> Listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to grasp what I'm trying to say. If you are a parent or just someone you love, let's say, love dearly, is getting ready to be attacked, by a dog and they're pinned up against the wall and the dog is drooling and growling and showing all his teeth and he's ready to, to jump in and, 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 and tear, tear your loved one to pieces. You will grab whatever you can 
and you will go after that dog and try to beat him to death rather than let him, even you put yourself in danger's way, rather than let that dog come anywhere near your loved one. Why don't you have that same determination when it comes to apprehending the things of God, the promises of God, the healing of God, the deliverance of God, the power of God, the manifestation of God's presence? Why do you not have that determination? <clears throat> You know, whatever you have, whatever you don't have, whatever you don't have enough of, do you know God will give it to you? He will bring you up to par. But you have not because you ask not. You talk about it. You pray about it. But are you asking you notice what Jesus said when he talked to the blind man? Now, it sounds like a stupid question. It's basically a rhetorical question. But it was the man's place to state what he wanted. And that was the only way he was going to get it. Even though Jesus already knew it was obvious, any dummy standing around, it was obvious to them what he wanted from Jesus. But the man, Jesus required him to ask, what will thou, you know, what do you want me to do? Let me just put it in everyday English. What do you want me to do for you? Ah, uh, that I might receive my sight, kind of like, duh. <clears throat> my question to you, what do you really want God to do for you? What do you want him to do? Are you going after it? Or are you sitting there like we used to do in school with your hands folded on the desk, being a good little student, being quiet and waiting? Are you waiting? You waiting for the bus to come and pick you up? You're waiting for mommy to come and scoop you up in her arms. You're waiting for the bell to ring so you can get up out of your desk and go out and play or go home. You're waiting. Get up off your duff. What you sitting there for? You ain't going to get home till you get up off the desk. You're not going to get on the bus till you get up off the bench. What are you doing? Do you want what God has for you? Or are you going to sit there and look cute with a smile on your face, waiting for God to come on a white horse and scoop you up? You waiting for him to do this. You waiting for him to do that. You waiting for him to tell you the other. You know, wait on the Lord doesn't mean sit there and do nothing. Or as they say in the old days, sitting on your do nothing. No. Waiting on the Lord. Look, <laughs> if I got to catch a bus, <clears throat> excuse me, cold is still coming out, y'all. If I have to catch a bus and the bus is coming at 7 a.m. Now, I may not be a morning person, but I got to be on that bus in order to get where I got to be on time. But there's a storm and the wind is blowing against me. <clears throat> I already know the weather's bad. I already know things are going crazy. So now I have to take the initiative. Listen, initiative, write that word down and look it up in the dictionary. I have to take the initiative and say, now what must I do? I have to get up early. Let me get all my stuff ready now because now I'm not in a hurry. I'll be able to think of everything I need to be ready 
to face that storm. Hmm. Let me get everything, all my ducks lined up in a row. So when I leave the door, I'm fully equipped, fully dressed, and ready to face. And able to get to the bus stop and get up on that bus on time. So I won't be late. So my day won't be messed up even worse. What are you doing in your life? What are you doing in your life to prepare for God's calling? For God's purpose? Prepare for your blessing. Okay, sun's going down. Sun's going down on your day. You feel like your blessings are going down, 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 down. Now your blessings seem to be out of sight, don't they? But the sun's coming up at, a, at an appointed time. You know that. So as the sun goes down, you don't lose hope and commit suicide because there'll be no more daylight in your life. No. You know, just like the sun was scheduled to go down, there comes a schedule, fullness of time, where that sun must come up. But while you're waiting on the sun to come up, you must be preparing for that next day. You must prepare for what's ahead of you. You don't suck your teeth at the moment. You don't curse your darkness because between sunset and sunrise is darkness. But that darkness is just as blessed as when the sun reveals itself in the morning. Your morning has begun in the darkness. Don't curse your darkness. Don't curse the storm. Don't kick the can because it's raining. Don't have a hissy fit in a temper tantrum because the wind is whipping. I'm really struggling to see where God is taking this. Believe it or not. Because I believe he wants to say something and I don't want to miss it. So I'm asking you to help me, Lord. Okay. I'm seeing a picture of a person sitting in their chair. And while they're sitting in their chair, tears are running down their eyes. I believe I'm seeing a pity party. They're feeling like their lot in life is for everything to be ugly and sad and dreary and weary and pitiful and minimal, uneventful, dull, hopeless, empty. Okay. Sun is shining bright. The weather's good right now. You're not even pressing in against the storm. Right now you're just sitting there thinking about your life. Well, you know what's got you in that state of mind? Everything that's happened to you in the back door. You know what happens when you focus on what's behind you? Try this. Please don't try it. No, do not try it. I'm making a joke. Do not try this. Imagine with me, you're sitting in the driver's seat of a car and you're heading north. You're northbound on Fifth Avenue. And you know if you make a right turn and you park the car on such and such an address, you're going to be at your point of destination. But right now you're on Fifth Avenue. And there's traffic everywhere. And where are your eyes? Your eyes are focused on the rear view mirror. You're staring in the rear view mirror, contemplating 
That's as bad as having your hand to the plow and looking back. You're staring at that rear view mirror so hard that you forgot that your car is moving. You're moving forward, but there's no one looking where you're going because you're looking at where, where you're coming from. You're focused on the wrong destination. You're not going to the past. You're coming from the past, but you got to look at where you're going and your eyes are focused on the wrong thing with tears running down your eyes, with regret, with shame, with fear mounting up for your future. But you're not looking ahead. You're still staring at the rear view. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think will be the result of glaring at the rear view mirror and never looking in front of you while you're driving forward? I'm not even going to answer it. That's a rhetorical question. It answers itself. That's what your life will be. Collision after collision. Crisis after crisis. Frustration after frustration. Anger after anger. Failure after failure. Quitting after quitting, running after running, squatting and pity party in your life away because you're focused in the wrong direction. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before oppress oppress toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus how can you press toward a mark when you're so busy focusing on the past you don't even know where the mark is because you're so busy looking in the rear view mirror of your life. Thinking about all the unfair things that happen. I realized personally that when I stopped focusing on everything that went wrong, and started focusing on the one that could make everything right. That's when things started changing for me. Not by might, nor by power. In other words, not by my might, not by my willpower, not by my smarts, not by my schemes, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. When you focus on God, you're focusing on the mark. He's the only one that knows where he's taking you. Not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not the one you have a crush on, and not the one that has a crush on you. Not your mama, not your daddy. God knows where he's taking you. The one that gets where they're going, knows where they're going, knows how to get there. And if they don't know how to get there, guess what they do? They ask for directions. Oh, my. Now, see, <clears throat> I just opened up another can of worms. Some of y'all won't get where you're going because you won't get counsel. You won't get godly counsel. You won't pray. You won't seek God in his word. You won't ask him questions. You don't ask him questions because you don't expect him to answer you. So you don't look, you don't scratch, you don't dig, you don't search. Listen. <laughs> when you are asking directions, you know what I do when I'm driving in a, in a city? and I don't know the area, 
I always pull up to the folks who are walking or sitting at a bus stop because I know they're the ones that maneuver around the neighborhood. They know how to get where they got to go. I don't pull up to a fancy car. I pull up to the folks that are hustling to get where they got to go. Nine times out of 10, I get exact directions and I get where I'm going. Some of you are too proud to ask. They say that's typical of men. So don't beat me up. They say that. Yeah. <clears throat> but a lot of times there are people who are so full of pride. They will not pull over, save two hours of wasted gas and time. They will not pull over, humble themselves, and ask somebody how to get somewhere. That could be two miles away and very easy to get to. But you will drive hither, thither, here, yarn, far, near, all over the place, loop to loop, sometimes missing the whole event. Because you will not ask. I don't know what that is. You feel inadequate because you have to ask? Everybody has to ask. Come on. You got to get over yourself. That's our biggest hindrance. Our biggest enemy is not the devil itself. It's pride. Fear. So you'd rather meander around over here, over there. You don't know where you're going. You get lost. You wasted all that time, all that energy. Got yourself up into an emotional tizzy because you didn't just pull over right there and ask the person how to get to something, <laughs> how to get somewhere. What's that about? Why don't you ask God? You don't have the faith, ask him. You don't have the wherewithal to get you from point A to point B, ask him. You don't have the ability to retain what you learn, ask him to give you the ability to remember. So you can ask those questions because the Bible does say the spirit will bring all things to your memory. So what you've forgotten, the Holy Spirit does not forget. He'll help you remember what you can't even pull up. You know, the more you lean on God, the easier it is to lean into the storm and press your way through. Because you're not depending on you. You're depending on a higher power. You're depending on the love of your heart, the lifter up of your head. You're depending on the savior of your soul. You're depending on your mighty counselor, mighty God and the everlasting father. You're depending on him to get you there. You're not looking at the mirror talking about, I got to get me there. See, that's how that king messed up. He, he gave himself all the credit from getting from point A to point B and having all this power. God had him out there wandering around like the beast of the, of the field with claws and everything acting like an animal, living like an animal. Don't get so full of yourself that you can't ask for help. Don't get so full of yourself that you get an attitude before you get gratitude. Don't be that full of yourself. That ain't nothing but pride. That's all that is. So my question to you, how bad do you want it? Are you willing to feel like a fool, look like a fool, be thought of as a fool in order to win the prize? There will be times pressing in the storm will mean you got to shut your mouth. You got to fight everything in your fiber to shut that mouth, shut that trap. Everything you think you could have said, you slice them up and cut them down, put them in their place. Ain't going to make a fool of me in public. Oh, really? Let's see how you fight the desire hmm. to stand your ground for your pride, for your image, for your reputation. 
See, when you press into the storm, there's a whole lot of stuff you pressing in against. There's a lot of resistance. And some of the biggest resistance that we have to fight through is ourselves, our flesh, leaning to our own understanding, feeling embarrassed because somebody won an argument over us, feeling embarrassed because somebody jammed us up in public in front of other people, making us feel like a little pee. Why you feel so small? That's pride. Hmm. The easier it is for you to get insulted, the more pride you need to get out of your system. See, God allows life to happen to show you what you're not equipped with. When you're going through the storm and the rain is hitting you and your feet are getting wet, that means you didn't wear the right boots. When the storm is hitting you and the clothes under your coat get wet because your coat is saturated, you didn't wear the right clothes to weather the storm. So when you're going through life and you're getting angry because of this and your temper is short over here because of that and you're ashamed because of the other and you have regrets and you're embarrassed and you're fearful, all of this is going on because God is trying to show you you're not dressed for the storm correctly. And the only way you can get dressed correctly for the storm to weather the storm in the right spirit without getting overtaken by the storm and its elements is through prayer. Reading God's word. Resisting the devil. Making him flee and get up out of your business. I don't know if you're getting it. This is a weird message because that storm represents a lot of stuff. That rain and that wind. You're battling a lot of stuff that's right in here. And you got to fight to focus forward and not focus on what's behind you. You don't have time to fight the storm and focus in the rearview mirror at the same time. You don't have time to fight that storm and look behind. You look behind that storm going to blow you back and you're going to lose ground. Then you got to come to God on your knees, feeling all pitiful and sad and you blew it once again. See, the storms of life is not everything that's going wrong around you. It also includes those days when things are going wrong within. Things are going wrong in your heart. Things are going wrong or are wrong with your mindset. See, that's why the Bible says in Romans 12, <clears throat> 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind is the proof because where your mind is, is where your life will be at that moment. And how do you renew your mind? Through the word of God and prayer. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. What does that have to do with the storm? A lot of storms that are raging are raging down deep within. They're raging in your spirit. They're raging in your emotions. They're raging in your mind. They're raging in your pride. They're raging in your temperament. And you got to battle that storm. How do you battle that storm? You go to God for healing. You ask God to give you the ability to forgive 
but you don't look back there. You ask God, you focus on God. Where are you going? You're going to the city of forgiveness. Where are you going? You're going to the town of humility. Where are you going? You're going to the building of love. Where are you going? You got to leave hate behind. You got to leave shame behind. You got to leave the wounds behind. Now, the wounds may not be healed, but you can't sit there and dig them up every time a memory strikes you. No, rather than dwell on it, take the memory. Say, God, here's another memory. Please handle it. Please get rid of the hurt associated with it. Please heal my heart. I am tired of it having control over everything I do and everything I feel. Press. You got to press for your goodies, baby. God has given you precious promises. He's given you power from on high. You've got to reach to access that power. You don't sit there with your hands folded like you did in school, sitting there in class with your hands on the desk waiting. Hi, Lord, I'm being good. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, Lord. I'm waiting. Lord, no. You reach. You get your butt up off of that chair. And you reach. You press for the prize of the mark of the high. You press in, baby. Well, now that I have challenged you to get up off your duff, <laughs> I hope you still love me. See, I found in my life that the more things get me riled up, the more things ruffle my feathers and get me bent out of shape, that means is that much more that's wrong with me, that much that's out of alignment with the Spirit of God. And many times God allows life to happen to take your temperature so that you will see for yourself, no, we're not at 98.6, we're at 104. We are, we are at 104 because you have an infection of your spirit. You have an infection of your emotions. You have an infection of your mindset. And it's jacking you up, buddy. And it's weakening you. You need healing. So what are you going to do for that healing? I'm waiting, Lord. Okay, I'm done. Don't throw no tomatoes at me. I'm going to duck and dodge. I'll turn my computer off. You ain't going to hit me. God bless you. Be encouraged. And know that you have an advocate by your side working with you. Paraclete, the Holy Spirit, he's right there alongside you. You're never alone. You always have access to all the help you need. Reach for it. Ask for it. Seek it. Scratch for it. Read it in your word. Just whatever you got to do, fast and pray. Do whatever. Turn that plate down. Turn the TV off. Turn the phone off. Dig for it, baby. Bug God. I mean, bug him. Nag him for what you want. Don't passively ask. No. Importunity. Press in and persist. Pursue. You go on hot pursuit for that piece of tail down the street. Go on hot pursuit for God. And all he has for you. Don't settle for second, third, fourth, fifth best. No. No, go after it with all your might and you will apprehend. God bless you.